So now I want my QCX Mini to send CQ contest from my N1MM contest logger program. To do that, I need to push F1 button on the keyboard and here it goes. And now I wanna stop the transmission with a pedal. That's it. Just touch a pedal. And now I can take over transmitting from the pedal. So imagine the station LW2 Bravo Hotel Papa, which is my second call sign in the real life, called me and I want to answer in the contest. So I need to push F5, his call, and F2, exchange. And then the QCX Mini will transmit nicely the call sign and the report. Into a dummy load we transmit and the frequency is 14.025 kHz. Now assume we want to jump onto the other frequency 14.023 where the station LY2 BHP is shown on the band map. So it only takes one click of a mouse. And the frequency is 14.023 on the QCX Mini. So, the cat is working nicely. Hello guys, this is Lina Slima Yankee 2 Hotel. It seems that everything's working flawlessly with this setup. I can control the frequency of the QCX Mini from the computer and I can send CW both from the macros in the N1MM logger and my key pedal interchangeably. So, How's all that possible with just one CAT cable? Well, that's easy. First, you've got to have a right cable. Secondly, you've got to rewrite, reconfigure the script of the macros in the N1MM. That's easy. Just stay tuned and I'll show you how. As it comes to the N1MM logger, I use it for many years and I like it even if I don't use probably even a half of the functions this logger offers for a modern HF station. But what I do use and what I do really need from the logger is to control the uh, frequency through the CAT control system and to send macros, to send messages from the logger uh, to the QCX transceiver or any other transceiver through the CAT control cable. And here we face a problem. The N1MM logger as it is, standard N1MM logger as it is, uh, does not work together well with the QCX mini transceiver. For instance, if I would like to send the repeat number the button F9 to repeat the number and I would push this button I would immediately get this unable to send this CW because there's no CW port set in config so uh, that's because of the um, of the peculiarities of, of the grammar or syntax of, uh, of the script of the macros and it's also related with the configuration of the serial port on the transceiver itself. If we right click onto any, any macros button, we see all the macros and all the scripts displayed. So putting the long story short, all you need to do is to rewrite the macros in the run messages and then later in the search and pounce message section, uh, rewrite the macro messages exactly as it is on the screen here using the kata one asc ky command preceding the text you wish to be transmitted. So please make a stop of this video, 
please make a screenshot and then so to say rewrite copy this text into your macros uh, of your n1mm logger exactly the same principle applied to the search and pounds messages which are in green in this file so in the search and pounds messages i also only changed first five messages the rest um, I, I don't need the rest i don't use i don't use them so that's that's the i left them unchanged and these buttons naturally do not function of course if i press them uh, but uh, i don't use them anyway if you would like to have more macros functioning you have to rewrite uh, with the kata1 asc ky command and all the rest uh, macros too so that's it pretty simple just take some time while compiling my own script i've been using information on the qrp labs group at groups.io it's an excellent source of knowledge the method described has got its own limitations which are very well described in the help file of the n1mm logger among the limitations for instance you can change the cw speed from your logger whatever you put in this tab or for the speed the transceiver speed won't change you can only change the speed on the transceiver from the transceiver and buttons itself yet another limitation if you push control k and you would like to send cw morse code straight from the keyboard typing on the keyboard you will get this message a cv port must be defined to use the cw window uh, we, we we simply can't define a cv port for this purpose also if you press ctrl t and you want to switch the tune tone on you will get the same message similar message no cv port defined so that's again one of the limitations but all these limitations uh, for my operational style in the contest are frankly of no importance so i can live with these limitations by the way guys this is not a tutorial i'm just sharing with you my own experience on what i've done to my own computer my own transceiver and the whole system what works for me not necessarily will work for you everything you do on your own system you do it on your own risk amen the cat cable is the most important part bad cable bad business when it blinks it's good i made the cable myself at home at the workbench because i thought it would take less time for me to make one than to find one on the internet but of course there must be or there should be or there certainly are cables ready made on the internet you can buy the right kind of cable is the cable which makes a conversion from usb to ttl level that's very important uh, the cable you may have with your Elecraft KX2 transceiver or the cable you may have with your Elecraft K3 transceiver. These cables will not work. So I found everything I need for USB to TTL level converter cable in my junk box. The, uh, US, the, an old USB cable was salvaged from uh, the um, good quality data cable for the uh, probably phone like usb to micro usb and i got one micro usb broken and so i chopped off the ends and i got a very good quality shielded cable for the data transmission then you need the uh, simple stereo connector trs connector tip ring sleeve tip ring sleeve trs stereo connector 
uh, please read carefully the QCX Mini user manual or assembly manual on the pinout, the right pinout of the of this of this connector. And the most important part is, of course, the USB to TTL converter itself. It's a converter and a little tiny transceiver, transmitter and receiver, transceiver inbuilt into this chip. This converter is based on the CP2102 chip. This chip for me is known as really working with majority of uh, radios with majority of computers. I know because this is not my first cable. I've already got one. I made it my own cable to program my Bofang walkie-talkie radio. It also based on the same chip and on the same USB to TTL level converter. This is a USB to TTL converter module. If you've got USB to RS-232 converter module, this module would not fit for this type of cable, which we need for the QCX Mini and the computer connection. So on this module, we have five pins. We only need three of them. We need TXD and RXD and ground. What is important to know it's that um, in this configuration of the cable, the TXD pin should go to RXD pin on the side of the QCX mini connector. And the RXD should go to the TXD on the QCX mini. And ground goes to ground. It's important not to mix this because otherwise the cable would not work. In some cases, I've heard reports that if the cable doesn't work, even if you've done everything accordingly to the schematics, it's a good advice just to swap TXD pin with RXD pin and see if, uh, if uh, the situation is improved. This could be connected to some possible fault within, uh, within the chip itself, some wrong wiring or something. So, I think I'm ready for the contest. Are you? Anyway, please leave me a comment in the comment section if you've got any questions or comments on how was your success in configuring QCX Mini for the CAD control. Also, please consider subscribing. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching. So far, 73. See you later. This is Linus Limayanki 2 Hotel.